everybody has in his own mind the ultimate challenge. For some, it's climbing the highest mountain. For others, it's swimming the English Channel. It might be a Grand Slam homer in the ninth inning of a World Series game. Or it could be as simple as spending a weekend with your favorite number 10. As for these three men, the challenge on this trip is to catch the biggest saltwater fish possible on light tackle. Our destination is the Turnoff Island Lodge, located about 30 miles southeast of Belize in Central America. It's about a two-hour ride to the lodge, and that gives each of them plenty of time to think about tomorrow. They all share a common dream, using light tackle with a maximum of 12-pound test. They want to see which one can land the largest fish. It takes only about two and a half hours by air to get to Belize City from New Orleans. Then it's only a pleasant boat trip from there to Turniff Island Lodge. When you're here, you get the feeling that you just might be playing a part in South Pacific. It's an island paradise. It was a sleepless night for all of them. They couldn't wait to get on the water and start trying to put their skills against the fish. That's Bill Cullerton in the shorts, Leon Chandler in the middle, and there's Ray Ostrom in the green shirt. Bill and Ray took one boat, and Leon took another. On this, the first day, Ray wanted to go after tarpon, but since the seas were fairly calm, Lonnie, Bill's guide, suggested they troll just outside the reef in deep water on the ocean side of the lodge. He wanted them to get the feel of things and see what happened. Since you never know what might hit. Somebody's gonna catch a fish and it's not gonna be me. First strike, and it's on Leon's line. I got a good. Oh, well, wait a minute. He's just going away with me. Darn. Oh, beautiful. Now Ray has a strike. Raymond, you're getting mixed up in my line. Darn. Oh, Neither of them know what they're fighting, but they both know they have a fight on their hands. <laughs> their catches are getting closer, but they still don't know what they have. They had never used tackle as light as this before on saltwater fish, and they had to play them very carefully. Gotta be the Jump over by him, not by me. See, that guy, he's close to the boat, didn't he? Yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was not legal fish. Your daughter's <laughs> still safe. <laughs> I got so darn excited. He's bringing his in. It's a king mackerel. 
and it's a beauty. Hey. <laughs> Unless you've done it, you might think it's impossible to land a 50-pound fish on a reel no bigger than your fist. One more time, Ken. But as you can see, it is not. <laughs> Look at that. It's a barracuda. Leon's catch was putting up a tremendous fight. And Bill and Ray moved in to see just what he had on his line. Now that's not exactly a Pepsi Den smile. One bite from that thing and you could lose a hand. Just look at what that mouthful of teeth did to Leon's lure. Leon turned the fish loose, but I think he'll mount the lure. One more time, Ken. Ray wanted to go after Tarp. They headed for the mangroves. The pockets of water that indent the mangrove areas is excellent tarpon and snook water. You only get one chance on a deal like that, though, and they're gone. That's it. You know. Easy, Ray. Easy. That's it. Keep that line tight, but bow to it when it jumps. Got to be the super fish of all. Oh, tough luck, Ray. At least he got some pictures of the fight. There'll be another fish. Ray gives a classic fisherman pose insisting that the tarpon was the world's record. Now they know what they're up against. Since the tarpon's mouth is almost solid bone, it's hard to set a hook in it. And one false move by a tarpon could cause him to cut that light line. So they're re-rigged with 30-pound leader. But they keep the 12-pound test line and sharpen the hooks. Well, if there's one tarpon, there's got to be more, huh? Now it's back to the fight. You know, the tarpon we've been catching haven't been the big tarpon, and Ken says they get them here over 100 pounds. I'm not ready for it. I am. I'm ready. Oh, son of a gun. Yeah! Look at that one little whack, and he's got me bleeding. Right in the middle, about... 100 yards down. Aha. Uh -huh. Dead center. About four fish came up at the same time. They're rolling down here, Leon. Sometimes tarpon roll when they're in waters like this. There are several theories on why they do that. Some say they're feeding. Others say they're trying to gulp air. All we know is that they usually strike when they're rolling. And that's what they're counting on. Middle. Yeah, she told me they're out there in the middle. Oh, there they are again. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Fish on. Bill comes through with a strike. <laughs> he said right out, see, it doesn't count. He told you about that one. <laughs> He told you there was a fish there, so that don't count. Uh. Oh. He plays it perfectly. Notice how he bows to the fish, but he 
never allows the tension to drop. Come on, you! Keep bowing and hold that line tight. This is a very delicate fishing technique. And Bill plays it in the classic way. Notice that every time it jumps, Bill bows. Coming up, coming up, Bill. Up, coming up, coming up, still out. Bow to him, bow to him. There he is. On the average, only about three out of ten tarpon that are hooked will be landed. But this one's going to wind up in the boat. He'll jump now, I think. It's not a big tarpon, but for that light line, it's, oh. it's nice fishing. I love it. Now he's ready. I think he's still Well, Ray, green. we're still waiting. Remember, Ray, three strikes and you're up. Well, maybe I'll make you lose them, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Mr. Tarpon. Come here, Mr. Tarpon. God damn it. Ready to get the nice it's not a trophy catch, but it's a beauty just the same. And as every fisherman knows, the fun's over once the fish is in the boat. So Bill will keep a picture, but the tarpon will go free. Now it's back to the mangrove, where they spend the rest of the afternoon fighting fish. In the next two hours, Bill lands two more. But Ray and Leon are not able to get a single fish in the boat. Ray hooks a tarpon right next to the boat. Now, a lot of times, tarpon will follow a lure almost up to the boat and then strike. That's what this one did. And Ray wasn't sure of what he should do with it. This light tackle is really getting the fishing test. Remember, that's only 12 pound test line. There it is. With Bill's help, Ray managed to land his fish. But these smaller tarpon on light tackle are really fun. I fished them in other areas, Bill, where we had to use 80-pound line, a 65-pound line, and stuff. And then had a live bait them too. And that, that's not nearly as much fun. Well, Bill and Ray both had landed tarpon, but Leon wasn't able to get one to the boat. But Leon had caught a nice fish or two, and you can count that a successful day. As the first day's outing was coming to a close, they reflected upon how enjoyable it is to be in the beautiful Caribbean, doing one of the things they love to do, fish. The next day, the first order of business was to re-spool. Line is the least expensive piece of your fishing equipment, but it's very important because it's the only thing between you and your fish. They re-spool their reels with Pion Mono because of its soft feel and its remarkably resistant strength. And that's exactly what they need for more tarpon fishing. They were also told that today should be an excellent day for bone fishing. So they rigged their fly rods. Now the fly rods are rigged with micron backing. This will give them an extra 150 yards of line for long runs by the bone fish. Leon attaches the fly line to the backing with a knot small enough to clear the guides on the rod. Bill decides to add 40 pound leaders to his lures just in case. Well, with everything in order, it's back to the mangroves and more tarpon. They're fishing the mouth of a large lagoon that flows into the ocean. This is supposed to be a good area for tarpon and just about anything else. 
You know that there's a deep edge over there because the river turns through here. Oh. This is where we're going to get one 100 pounds. Take it, baby. <laughs> it's not a tarpon, that's right. How come you get me so nervous? Smiling Jack. It was a Jack. Not a bad fish, but it wasn't a tarpon. What kind of a Jack do you call that? Jack Creval. Now stick your thumb uh, in his mouth, Ken. <laughs> this is wild casting in an area where you can't see the fish. Nobody knows exactly what might hit the lures, but they're hoping for tarpon. Oh, Jesus, Bill. Over here, big fish, right up, see the bubbles? Big tarpon. <laughs> when Kenny says big tarpon, hang on. Coming up! Whoa! That was beautiful. Oh. Smooth dry against you. Does that been Oh, when he's hooked deep, he says, oh! Saltwater fish are great fighters. On, I don't know if they're so strong because they have to fight every day for their survival, or they're just more hardy than freshwater fish. But it's a sense that anything that you might hook in saltwater is going to fight back. It sure puts a lot of pressure on that light tackle. Just look at that skyline rod take those tarpon jumps. There it is, and it's a nice one. Okay, okay. Uh, out. Like the rest of the fish they caught, this one will be sent back home safe and sound. All Bill will have left is a picture of him with his catch, but that's all any of them wanted anyway. Okay, right now we're going to sneak up on a big tarpon and it's going to be all over for him. We're just going to just have a little fun with him and let him go. We won't hurt him. Stay with him, Leon! Yeah! Wait a minute. I believe Leon might still be able to hold up his head in this crowd. Oh, it's a good one. Good one. Yeah, there it is. It's a tarpon, all right. Atta boy, Leon. Takes time, remember that. The minute they're over 40 pounds, it's a different fish. As you'll find out in about 45 minutes. By this time, Leon's confused about what he might have. It appears that the tarpon threw the hook and it was picked up by something else. Anyway, it's strong and it puts up a good struggle. Here it comes. It's getting closer to the boat. Still, it isn't jumping. Leon still doesn't know what he's got. By golly, it is a tarpon. That's why it wasn't jumping. After its initial leap, it apparently stuck the second hook in its eye. Oh, look at that. Oh. <laughs> well, Leon took a ribbing the night before because he didn't catch a target. But he won't hear anything from Bill and Ray this night. It's the largest tarpon caught so far in this part, and I'll bet it'll weigh 65 pounds. Not bad for 12-pound test line. And how about that little pin reel? Leon has fished bonefish before, but never in Belize. 
Belize claims to have some of the finest bone flats in the world. Oh, tailing right there. Tailing. I can't cast that far against the wind. Not tailing, but it's ripples. In that white hole, to the right side of it. Now. Bonefish are highly nervous and easily spooked fish that scavenge for food in the shallow waters at high tide. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. A bonefish oh, might be nervous, but it's no sissy. A bone can swim 60 miles an hour in only six inches of water. It can give you a good fight, and it's not easily hooked. Leon is fly casting. Bill and Ray are fishing with spinners. This is what is called stalking. That's the method for catching bonefish. It's a carefully planned pursuit. The bonefish like to feed on shrimp, crab, and other shellfish during the high tide. They usually work in schools, and the trick is to deliver your lure into that school without spooking them, or they might take off like a flight of geese. One of them hit Leon's fly. He has to hold the rod high and play it with a steady hand. Let's watch him on the rocks, here. Yeah? And they're trying to get for the rocks, here. Yeah? Follow him up. Yeah. Keep it right high, keep it high. The bone's trying to get back to the deep water and it'll drag his light line over coral. Stop falling up. Falling up. Falling up and taking... Ah! What are you going to get over the Oh, list? well. Yeah. I'm going over the edge. Get off! Can you still see him? Yeah, I It's saw back to stalk. Yeah. Bill has exchanged his spinner <laughs> for a fly rod. Yeah, not real bad, though. Bill spots a school right at the break. Good boy, Billy! Those are tailing closer than the school. Hang on! <laughs> Back him up. Don't let it get into the breaker, Bill. That deep water will give it a good chance to get away. Oh, shark got him. Shark got him. <laughs> but wait, it's coming back. And that's unusual <laughs> behavior for a bonefish. It must have run into some trouble. Don't land him. Don't land him. Sure them. enough, it did have some trouble that was worse than the hook. Yeah. It was hit by another fish, and it took a hook out of its back. <laughs> I think the shark hit him. Yeah. He got a bite. The shark hit him? So I want to break the water up. Yeah. The shark hit him. The mark's on him. You'll see. Keep it high. Keep it high. Watch the rock. Walking back, walking back. Meanwhile, Leon's fish has taken him to the deep water, too. Oh, 
watch him on the rocks, eh? And we're trying to get for the rocks, we're following him up. But this time he follows. He holds the line as high as he can, letting the bone wear itself out. Now that's a nice bonefish, about five pounds or so. Now that's a number 10 in the fishing world. Well, the second day of our adventure was winding down. Bill, Ray, and Leon are starting to wonder what will be in store for them tomorrow. They spent the rest of the week fighting the waters around the lodge. But just before they left, they saw a printed t-shirt that just might express the way they all felt about fishing in this enchanting part of the world. It said, you can believe it in Belize. Now who could argue with that?